Even know who wrote it? Okay, now it definitely wasn't Jesus. Isa mm -hmm. Maryam didn't write it. It wasn't a disciple or an apostle or any of that stuff. I'm not sure. It could be. This is the name. This is kind of funny. It could be possibly Paul, Barnabas, Silas, Ap Apios, Apollos, Luke, Philip, Priscilla, uh, Aquila, uh, the Clement of Rome. These have been suggested, but. In reality, there could be more, like the pestle and others. We have no evidence to ascribe it to anybody in particular. All right. Now, that's the end of Hebrews. Brother, please. The yeah, mic is let's, let's deal with it. What John MacArthur is noting, it's simply a fact that there were some Christians who thought, for example, Barnabas may have written it, or Apollos, or maybe it was Priscilla Quilla. But he doesn't tell you that many, if not most, of the Christians, especially in the eastern part of the church, believe Paul wrote it using an amanuensis, meaning a scribe. Why did they think Paul wrote it? Because number one, if you study the theology of Hebrews, it very closely resembles the teaching of Paul in his letters. Number two, go to Hebrews 13, 23 to see who is mentioned at the conclusion of the epistle. 13, 23. Yes, brother. Know that our brother Timothy has been set free with whom I shall see you if he comes shortly. Okay, no, notice here who you mentioned? Timothy. Timothy is one of Paul's traveling companions. And Timothy is the one that Paul wrote his last two letters right before he was beheaded. So here, whoever wrote it clearly is from the Pauline group, meaning if it's not Paul, it's a follower of Paul because Timothy was a traveling companion of Paul. So there is evidence to show it's Pauline, Pauline. But I am convinced and persuaded that Paul actually had someone write it for him. And there is very strong internal evidence that the one who wrote this for Paul, because we know it comes from the Pauline group because Timothy's mentioned. Do you see that? Yes. Okay. The one who wrote it for Paul most likely is Luke. Do you know why Luke? Mm -hmm. No. Okay. Because the Greek of Hebrews is high class, polished Greek, sophisticated Greek that is very identical to the Greek of Luke and Acts. Scholars of the Greek New Testament will tell you that Luke and Acts was written by someone who was highly educated, proficient in Greek because his Greek is very polished and is of the highest quality. So is the Greek of Hebrews. Luke and Acts and Hebrews, the Greek of those books, are highly polished, quite, quite polished, very, very <clears throat> articulate, showing that whoever wrote these books was very educated and knew Greek very well. And because the Greek of Hebrews is similar to Luke and Acts, many have been persuaded into thinking Luke wrote Hebrews on behalf of Paul. So the evidence is very early and widespread that it's actually a letter of Paul, but Paul didn't have to write it to be his because Paul uses scribes, amanuensis, and the Greek, the polished Greek of Hebrews is similar to, if not identical to the polished Greek of Luke and Acts, which makes it most likely that Luke is the one who's writing Hebrews for Paul. Now, I'll give you further proof that Luke is our most likely candidate for writing Hebrews because notice who does he mention? Timothy, right? Timothy, yes, brother. Now go to First Timothy, chap I'm sorry, go to Second Timothy, chapter one, verses one and two. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, according to the promise of life which is in Christ Jesus, to Timothy, a beloved son, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. So he's writing to Timothy, right? Yes, brother. Now go to 2 Timothy 4.11. Who is with Paul in prison as he's writing to Timothy? 4.11. Only Luke is with me. Get Mark and bring him with you, for he is useful to me for ministry. Hallelujah. So Luke is with him? Yes. And so Luke knows Timothy? Yes. And Timothy knows Mark and Luke? Yes. And Luke and Mark both know Paul and travel with Paul? Absolutely. So now since Hebrews is written where Timothy is also in prison about to be released, then you can make a very strong case that 
this was written by Paul using a scribe, most likely Luke, because here, when Paul is again in prison, because he's in prison more than once, and here during this time of 2 Timothy, notice Timothy's not in prison, Paul is, and Paul's about to be killed. This is the last letter he wrote before he was beheaded. So then you can make a strong argument that just like here in the last letter that Paul wrote, Luke was present with him. And if Luke is present with him, of course he's going to use Luke as one of his scribes. And Luke knows Timothy, and Paul is writing this to Timothy. You make you can make a strong case that in Hebrews, during another of one of Paul's imprisonments, there again, Luke would be present with Paul, and he would have Luke writing this letter to the Hebrews, this time not to Timothy, but to these Jews who are about to apostatize. Are you with me there? Yes. Now, does Paul use scribes known as amanuensis? Yes, because go to Romans 16, 22 and see it was a common fact that authors would have scribes writing letters for them with their approval. Because in Romans 16, 22, a letter no one denies is Pauline, meaning from Paul. Paul is sending his letter to the Christians at Rome. But did Paul write it? Let's see. I, Tyrannus, who wrote this epistle, Greet you in the Lord. So why is Tertius writing this letter of Paul when it's Paul's letter to the Christians at Rome? Because Paul is using him as a scribe. So then you have a good case that Hebrews, because it's Polish Greek, and the Greek of Hebrews is similar, if not identical, to Luke and Acts. Luke is writing Hebrews for Paul. Awesome. And the reference wow. to Timothy shows clearly comes from the Pauline, Pauline circle. And even if you say it's Barnabas, that doesn't refute it's Paul, because who is Paul's traveling companion? Barnabas. Luke, Luke and Barnabas. Yeah. Right? In the book of Acts, who's traveling with Paul? Barnabas. And so even if it's Barnabas, that would simply mean Barnabas is writing it as Paul's scribe. And if Absolutely. you want to say it's Apollos, that still doesn't mean it's not Pauline or Paul. Why? Because Apollos would be writing it on behalf of Paul because Paul and Apollos knew each other and Apollos knew Luke. So even if you say it's Apollos, that would only mean that Paul used Apollos to write it for him. If you say it's Barnabas, that would only mean that Paul used Barnabas to write it for him. If you say Luke, that only means that Paul is using Luke to write it for him because clearly this letter comes from the Pauline group. How do we know it's from the Pauline group? Because Timothy is mentioned someone that traveled with Paul till the very end. Even if it's anonymous, even if it's anonymous, that actually tells you, tells you the integrity of the church. Let me explain why. And I hope you guys are listening because you were going into a lot of meat and I'm trusting the spirit to save us from error and give us the power to call facts clearly and speak clearly for the glory of Jesus, even though the demons have been manifesting. Okay. Even if we don't know who wrote it, that's actually a testimony to the integrity of the church. Why? Why is it a sign of the integrity of the church? Hebrews was actually debated whether it should be included in the canon or not. Now, why? Because they weren't certain who wrote it. Now, you know why? That shows you how honest these men of God were. Because the book of Hebrews is one of the most powerful books in defense of the Trinity, in defense of Jesus being the God-man, in defense of Jesus' vicarious death for our sins and his priestly work and priestly intercession in heaven. Why would any Christian not want this book in the canon when it's thoroughly orthodox and it affirms the Trinity, the divine personhood of the Holy Spirit, Jesus is Jehovah God in the flesh, the Son of the Father, who's equal to the Father in essence, who became man, who died for our sins, to atone for our sins, who's a high priest who intercedes for us and will return physically, bodily, to judge the living and dead, all of which completely agrees with the theology of the church. Why then would they question it? Because to them, it didn't matter if a book was solid theologically. To them, it was important that the book came from the apostolic period, because the church realized that it was only during the time of the apostles that the Spirit inspired men to write books that were Scripture. So they had to know for certain, did this come from the apostolic period? 
where the apostles were there and their companions with them, where they're receiving revelation from the Spirit to now write down books that are Scripture. Because you can have a book written after that period that is sound theologically, but it doesn't mean it's inspired by the Spirit. That shows you their integrity. Amen. Amen. You Hallelujah. get my point? Absolutely. So they didn't question its canonicity, whether it should be in the canon or not, because it contradicted their theology. Hebrews is one of the most powerful witnesses to the Trinity. The Holy Spirit being Jehovah, a divine person. Jesus being Jehovah in the flesh, the Son of the Father, distinct from the Spirit, and that Jesus is the God-man. And as man, he's our high priest to offer his life as a sacrifice, who now intercedes for us, who return physically, bodily, to judge the living and dead. You don't get more orthodox than that. So then why would they question it? Because it doesn't matter how sound a book is theologically. Because many Christians came and wrote books that were sound theologically. But they were not inspired. Because one of the criteria, one of the criteria for a book to be accepted as revelation from the Spirit and part of the collection of books that the churches had to read and submit to is that a book had to be written during the apostolic period. Why during the apostolic period? Because that was the only time the Spirit was giving revelation that all churches had to submit to. And that was the only time that the Spirit was inspiring men to write books containing that revelation that all churches had to submit to. After this apostolic period, there was no more revelation in that sense. So if you couldn't prove that Hebrews came from the period of the apostles and their companions, during the period where the Holy Spirit was inspiring people to write books that all churches had to submit to, then you could read it and be edified by it, but you could not make it part of those list of books that all Christians had to submit to. So that Absolutely. tells you they were men of integrity because it was simply, well, their book agreed with them theologically, then all the more reason not to question Hebrews. And by the way, Catholics at the Council of Trent, you'll find that Hebrews is ascribed to Paul. And in the King James Version, when it was originally produced, you'll find that when you go to chapter 1, it says, the epistle to the Hebrews according to St. Paul. So even the King James translators believe Paul wrote this, perhaps using a scribe. And even in the Council of Trent, Hebrews is ascribed as one of the 14 letters that Paul wrote by inspiration of the Holy Spirit, whether directly or through the use of a scribe. And ironically, the official position of the Joe's Witness Bible, the Joe's Witnesses in their official teaching ascribe Hebrews to Paul. Even the Joe's Witnesses say Paul wrote Hebrews.